We're going to talk now a little bit about one of the most common, uh, most useful adjustment layers, and that is the curves adjustment layer. Um, if you were looking over at um, our friend Handout 6, um, Handout 6, I start out talking about a different adjustment layer first. I start talking about levels. I no longer bother with levels, right? Levels, right out of here. Um, we're just going to talk about curves because everybody uses levels for a while and then stops using it and uses curves because curves is better. And I don't want to teach you a garbage tool when there's a good tool that is right there and isn't any harder to use. Um, so let's talk about curves. Um, I have this lovely um, image over here. This is uh, a man on a bicycle with a bunch of um, squares in different shades of gray. Kind of weird, but it will make sense in just a sec. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of a uh, curves layer that I created five seconds ago um, before I turn this video on. Um, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a new adjustment layer, click the black and white cookie and select curves. Um, I'm going to rename it. Let me just call it curves demo layer layer layer. Good job. Um, so when we go here and click on our curves um, adjustment layer, in properties you will see a histogram. Right, so it's a histogram and it's got uh, this line going through the middle and then it's got a little arrowy thing at the bottom side and a little arrowy, or the left side, a little arrowy thing at the right side. Um, now, histogram, right, a little refresher. Histogram is just a bar chart, right? So it indicates um, going from one side that is absolute black to the other side that is absolute white, um, how many pixels you have at each of those values um, in between and including black and white. Um, so if we look at this histogram and then we look at our file, um, so we can see there is a spike of uh, black images or black uh, pixels, right? It's really hard to see because it's absolutely right at the very, very edge. And that would be this total blackness right here. I can tell it's total blackness if I go to info and I hold my mouse over it and its RGB values are zero, zero, zero. So cool. Um, so that is that. Then we have a spike here that is dark gray. That I'm assuming is this, which looks like black. But again, if we go to info, it's not actually black. It's just real, real dark. Um, and then, right, keep going up. There's some lighter dark grays, right, which presumably are things in my picture. Then again, there's a spike which I'm saying is that box, another spike, which is this box, another spike, which is that box. Those stand out because they're all exactly the same tone, right? So it's a tall stack of, on that bar chart, how many pixels there are of exactly precisely that tone. Um, and then this sort of undulating line is all of the pixels in this photograph that have all of these different tones to them. Um, if I hide my man on a bike layer, Right, you'll just see this tick, 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 tick um, of those little boxes right there, and a very thin line that's the black, and a very thin line that is this white background. Um, so there we have our curves. Now, what do these controls actually do? So down here at the bottom end, right, we said that this is the end that represents total blackness, right? No information beyond just black. Um, so this little triangle down here, that is representing where absolute blackness is, where we hit that point. If I grab that triangle and drag it over to the right, so I'm going to drag it over past three of those little spikes, um, everything to that side of it, right, is now absolute black, right? Because that's the point, that is the darkest point, that is the point of everything being absolute black. So if I pull it all the way over here, all of these pixels, that formerly had some tone to them that was a little bit lighter than absolute black, those are now all completely absolutely black. And if we look at our picture, right, there's a whole lot more just solid black in the picture. And if you look at our gray patches, right, these first three, well, gosh, they certainly look like absolute black to me. 
Um, so if you grab that, right, drag it along, we keep dragging, we drag it all the way over to this side. Um, basically everything except pure whiteness um, has gone to absolute black, right? Because we've put the point that is where absolute black is all the way over here. All of these pixels are now absolute black. Um, we can do the same thing with the light end of things, right? So as I'm dragging this over here, you see the squares start to blend into that white background because they've just gone to absolute white. And you will see the um, image also have a lot more of those pixels that normally would have been, you know, like a lighter tone, but not white. Um, those are now also all white because this point, the point of this is where everything is totally white, has shifted over and now all of these pixels are beyond that point. Right, if it's more than absolute white, it just can't get any whiter. It's just white, um, like Mitt Romney. Um, so that's what those two controls are. Um, and we'll use those sometimes, right? If we have an image where we want to punch up the contrast a little bit, we can pull up that bottom one. That's going to make more things that are dark, darker. We can pull in this top one. That's going to make more things that are light, lighter. So dark, it's darker, like it's lighter. Midtones stay basically the same, more contrast. Um, the other thing that we'll often do is that we'll go and we'll just grab the middle and we'll pull it up a little bit or down a little bit, um, usually up. So what that's doing is it's saying, okay, these midtones, we want to make them brighter and we want to gradually feather that adjustment. So my midtones are getting brighter and everything going toward the highlights and going toward the shadows, right, gets brighter but then sort of fades back down to what it was normally by the time it gets to the end. Um, so practice that too, right? Grab that midpoint, drag it around. Um, you can actually get multiple points on that curve, um, and you can get some fairly weird results when you start screwing around with it. Um, I would not recommend that. Um, most of the time, all we're going to do, control those endpoints, right, to where the black cutoff is, to where the white cutoff is, um, where we're clipping to black or clipping to white is the term. Um, and then we're going to use that midpoint roughly to make my midtones a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, um, without actually affecting absolute white or absolute black. Um, so those are your curves layers. Um, now we're working in black and white, the same thing, if I make my contrast a little bit higher. Um, also functions in color, right? So if I go back to my color bike man, um, if I move the midtones up and down, right? Same thing happens on there. Um, and if I go back and drag my highlight point, right? Also, everything goes to white or drag my black clipping point, everything goes to black. So I showed it to you in black and white because it's a little bit easier to see, but same thing works in color. Um, the other thing that works in color is that you can go in here, we were in RGB before, you can go to either red or green or blue, right? If I just go to the red channel, now I am only affecting the Red values. I'm going to make my red tones a little, or my mid tones a little bit more red, or a little bit more the opposite of red. Um, I could make my shadows, right, a little bit. Let's pull that actually up. Red, right. Um, same thing with uh, if I go grab my highlights, I can mess with those. Blah blah blah. You can do that with red green or blue. Um, so this is a sort of rudimentary way to do some color adjustment using the same controls. And people will do that. We'll actually do that today a little bit. Um, it's not as common, right? Most of the time, if we want to do some big color, we'll do it with a raw file. Um, but this is also a way that you can control that. Um, if I want to adjust my highlights, by the way, on uh, the color, right, that is still there, and the shadows also still there. Um, 
Okay, so those are the curves layer. Um, we'll show you how to work a little bit on a portrait and some practical uses for them um, in the next clip.